Hello, my friends. Uh, one of uh, the people that viewed my video on the Defender, which is the Youngling Saber, had sort of inquired to the veracity of um, the um, FX Sabres from Hasbro in, in sort of general terms. Um, I do have four force effects sabers one of them is a 2007 anakin which i uh, i think i've decided i'm just going to review as a separate piece later as kind of a retro look back at uh, what was uh, these two however are more recent um hasbro force effects sabers uh, you have the uh the ray uh graflex and uh innovator uh, these are just the regular uh, general release versions, not the Disney versions with the removable blades. Um, but what I wanted to, to, to basically, you know, tell the, the person in question, you know, what the what the advantages, what the pluses are to these sabers, and uh, what the what the minuses are in general terms. Um, the pluses. Um, you know, relatively screen accurate graphics, uh, sabers, they're officially licensed, they're approved, uh, Disney, uh, gives them their stamp of approval. So pretty much what you're going to see is kind of be, um, as, as screen accurate as the price point, which is usually around $150 will allow. Um, the Ray saber, um, I must preface by saying that the, the basic gist of these sabers is that the blade, although not removable, has a what's called a string um, LED in it, which, as you will see, allows the light to track up and down the blade very similar to um, what you'd find in a NeoPixel. Um, the way I understand it is the next generation of Hasbro uh, Force Effect Sabers, as uh, indicated by the, the uh, Saber sourcing, is that they are going to um, be uh, festooned with newer features um, that you would find on newer Sabers like NeoPixels. Um, they're going to have flash on glass. They're going to have yada, yada, yada. I won't get into it. I'll let her, uh, you know, you know, hold sway on that. Um, these uh, don't have flash on glass. They don't have really any other blade effects other than the fact that they do, uh, you know, kind of simulate the, the ignition and retraction of the blades. Um, one of the, uh, the distinct disadvantages to the blades of these is that, um, they're rather thin neck or rather that's, that's not right. They're, they're rather thin walled. Um, and as I said, they have LEDs going down the center. So, you know, they can take damage. They're not meant for dueling. They're just meant for show, strictly speaking. However, the hilts themselves are, are quite lovely. One of the things that um, Hasbro tends to do because of regulations is they uh, they slather them with uh, stickers that you uh, you know may or may not want to remove, uh, such as this and this. I've removed several from the hilt on the on the Vader. The stickers are for the most part still there. I I just kind of removed the really obtrusive ones. Um, they like to put stickers on the control boxes to indicate um, what the different, um, you know, how to activate the, the sabers. But, I mean, you know, you have one, you have all of them. Basically, you just push this forward, push that forward, and you're in business. So, let me just give you kind of a visual tour. You don't need me to explain every little bit, bit and piece of this thing, but... Um, as with the Graflex, it's it's very Graflex accurate. I mean, it doesn't say Graflex on it because then you're paying for uh, for um, trademarks. Um, but you have your, uh, your 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 bunny ears. You have your uh, little greebly here. You have your eye down here. Little um, features that you would see here. This is plastic, which is um, you know one of the few pieces on here that is plastic. This is all 
relatively aluminum. It has a good feel to it. Um, the control box has uh, the little um, release doobie, which which is just for show. Doesn't really do anything. And uh, as you've probably heard previously, um, these grips are sort of like this weird rubbery, plasticky, kind of grippy, textury. I don't know. It's hard to explain, but once you grip it, it's it's really really nice. You know, all things considered, as far as you know, picking up a a graphic saber and swinging around and, and just having a good time. This one's really, really super comfortable. I like it. Uh, the sounds are rather mediocre. I'll, I'll show you, show those to you in a moment. Um, you have your D ring. It's not, it's not screen accurate or anything to that effect. And, um, whereas the, the, um, the pommel would have all of the indica indicators of, uh, you know, the, the graphics, um, you know, verbiage or whatever. This just kind of gives you a general Hasbro copyright gobbledygook. Uh, so let's turn this thing on. So no flash on clash, but you do have the clash sounds. There's no blaster block or anything like that. Um, it's kind of funny, but that sort of makes sense because back when this, uh, saber was introduced way back in the New Hope, because this is, I mean, if you think about it, this belonged to Anakin, then it belonged to Luke, then it belonged to Rey, so it's, it's had a storied history, um, but they, they didn't really do blaster block, um, in any iteration of this saber. You can hear the swing sounds, have this weird sort of moany sort of quality to them. Oops, sorry. So that's not bad. I, I rather like this saber. I mean, um, I would very much like to get uh, something a little bit more elaborate. But in the, in the meantime, this is pro pretty much the extent of my uh, graphics. Um, our presence in my collection onto the Vader. Uh, I won't really elaborate too much on the uh, details of it, but suffice to say, louder, grumblier, red. good representation of Vader's saber. Now you'll notice that the, uh, the little wires that are sometimes present in certain versions are not present here. This um, uh, emitter piece is, is plastic. Um, it still has the same quality for the grips. Um, as usual, this isn't functional. Gabriel Greeblies, these are all inert. Um, even the uh, even the the C ring um, doesn't move, uh, which is fine. Since you can't remove the blades anyway, there's no point to even having a functional C uh, C ring because well, you can't really hang them from a belt anyway. Uh, so you can kind of get a feel for the quality of this. For the price, like I said, these run about $150 a piece. Totally worth it. I'm assuming that for the next movie, the graphics is going to be the uh, restored graphics with the, the section in the middle. Um, you can currently get a version of that, I believe, from both Saber Forge and possibly Ultra Sabers. But um, just wait. <laughs> They're going to be everywhere eventually. And um, last but not least, a special guest, something that everyone's seen a million times, but I also have a Kylo Ren. Now here's the, here's the rub, the new Kylo Ren saber as um, saber sourcing as a review, just going to have many, 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 many more features, but it's also going to be rather expensive. $300, I think is a lot. Uh, 
for something from Hasbro. For my money, if I was going to spend $300, I would just go ahead and spend $400 or $500 and get one from um, another company and probably go with the, the NeoPixel. Um, now, that being said, I do love this saber. The sounds are mediocre at best. But the thing that I found very interesting about such a large, heavy-handed saber is this is super comfortable. It fits right in your hands perfectly. Even with the cross guard, you can wield it, you can swing it. It's a lovely piece. Now I picked this one up on clearance. I did not pay more than $100 for it, I don't believe. And I adore this saber. And I don't have any desire to replace it with uh, with anything else. Or upgrade it or anything. I'm a simple man with simple tastes. And I really, really, really think that Hasbro did a marvelous job on this. Now, to be said, I've seen uh, videos that other people have produced where Hasbro kind of dropped the ball on this particular hilt and had some quality issues. But I picked this up on a Lark just because I saw it on clearance. On the, um, I think I bought it from the Disney site, if I'm not mistaken. And I don't regret buying this one for a minute. I think this is a wonderful saber uh, for what it is. But then again, as I said previously... You are not going to be dueling with this. But it's a lot of fun anyway. Anywho, I think if I did my job correctly, I kind of covered what I wanted to say and uh, what I wanted to let people know about the Force Effect Sabres. I think that uh, for the, uh, the novice collector, they're... They're totally worth every penny that you pay for them. I enjoy them. I think they're beautiful. I think they're well made. Um, the the newer versions have have really good quality. Um, they do what they're meant to do. They make sound. They make light. They simulate the uh, Star Wars lightsaber experience. But you can't do it with them. And there are more screen accurate representations of all of these out there. There's many, many different versions. Um, 89 Sabres, um, Corbanth, um, all of the major companies. JQ Sabres produces versions of these. Um, they're everywhere. And you really have the, the full, um, the full, you know, freedom to to pick and choose whatever you want equipped with whatever soundboards or or features that you want but you can eschew all of that and just go really really super basic and get these and i think they're fine additions to your collection i might be biased because my first saber was a force effects although it's made by master replicas i don't think it can go wrong and you can't be a snob about it because in the end, they're all just whatever they mean to you. <laughs> if you love them, then you love them. And that's all that matters. At any rate, I think I've rambled on enough. And I wish all of my friends out there to have a very good night. And if you're so inclined and generous, please comment, subscribe, like, all that good stuff. And I love y'all. You're epic and take care. Have a good night. Bye.